to be able to be called uh, your children. And we thank you, Lord, for this, our community, Floresville, and Father, for this uh, school district. We thank you, Lord, for Dr. Bays and her leadership and this school board for their leadership and wisdom, Lord, as they lead our students and lead our community in uh, further education. Father, we thank you for our students especially. We're grateful, Father, for the integrity and the honesty that is placed within the school district to help our students uh, require and acquire the same things, Lord, that we uh, require of ourselves. And so, Lord, we're grateful for that and thankful, Father, for all that you've given us and blessed us with. Bless our community. Bless our officials. Bless our city, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Joel. Good evening, FISD School Board, Dr. Bays, and the FISD community. I'm pleased to introduce you to fabulous fifth grade students from Ebony who will then lead us in tonight's pledges. Both students were recommended by teachers for showing excellence in and out of the classroom. Emma Lehman is the 10 year old daughter of David and Ashley Lehman. She is big sister to other Ebony kids, Josiah, Hannah, and Zachariah. At school, she is a member of the book club, safety patrol, student council, and helps with our flags. She can also often be found in math class, actually leading a small group of kids through math problems. Out of school, she is active in art, music, basketball, <coughs> soccer, and science, as well as an active member of the Church of Latter-day Saints. She hopes to one day attend college and major in biology. Daniel McKean is the 10-year-old son of David and Darlene McKean. He is brother to Patrick, Allie, Lauren, Brooke, Lynn, Silas, and Brian. These are very active brothers and sisters here. <laughs> Daniel is extremely active in robotics club and is us uh, usually inside of his recess because he used that time to build robots, some of which we were used in our Ignite Innovation Night. Out of school, he is, a, he is active in the First Baptist Church. In his spare time, he enjoys playing football, and he hopes to one day attend college and try out for a football team. Please join me in celebrating these wonderful students. female student of the month is Megan Mahula. She's the 18-year-old daughter of Cynthia and David Mahula. She is ranked number one in her graduating class with an overall approximate GPA of 105.9. Megan is a very active student at FHS. She is a member of the National Honor Society, has participated in the GT Showcase for the past four years, served on the Student Council Executive Board, and was JV Cheer Captain her freshman year. She is a member of the Mighty Tiger Band in which she has held several leadership roles, including Woodwind Lieutenant for two years. And she has made region band and advanced to area and qualified in the state's solo ensemble. In addition to her many activities, Megan is in all advanced courses through which she has received all A honor roll, outstanding student for AP Biology, Pre-AP Calculus, Pre-AP Biology, and Business Information Management. She has also been named a honor camper at the West Texas a and Band Camp. 
outside of school. Megan volunteers with her church vacation Bible school and assists with the Mighty Tiger Band uniform crew. Megan plans to either attend Baylor University or UT Austin, where she plans to major in radiology. Her top strengths are competition, deliberative, achiever, discipline, and relator. Ladies and gentlemen, Megan Kular, our female student month for November. Robert Colton Martinez. He is the 17-year-old son of, Ma of Madela Canales Martinez and the late Robert Martinez. Colton is ranked in the top 10% of his graduating class with an overall 4.0 GPA. Colton is also very active. He participates in the Mighty Tiger Band, serving as brass lieutenant. He is the reporter for the National Honor Society, the senior representative on the Executive Council for Lean Group, <coughs> is involved in student council, business professionals of America, and acts as, as the MC for the pep rallies. Colton has played on the Tiger baseball team his freshman and sophomore year, and he is a prince on the peanut festival court. Additionally, Colton takes all advanced classes through which he has been on the all A honor roll and received the outstanding student award for AP English three. Uh, Colton made all region band every year and qualified for area band his junior and senior years, and he also received superior ratings at state solo and ensemble. When not busy with school, Colton volunteers at Courage Ranch. Colton has been accepted to UT Austin, where he plans to major in communications and become a lawyer. His top strengths are achiever, learner, positivity, communication, and ideation. Ladies and gentlemen, Robert Colton Martinez, the male student of the month. You know, Megan and Colton, congratulations to both of you for being our November students of the month. You'll join a small pool of uh, exceptional students, and we're always so proud of you and love to hear about your achievements. Megan, I've watched you grow up in church and seen the beautiful young lady that you've become. And, Colton, I've seen you in different uh, events that happen at school. I've seen you leading the pep rallies. Both of you exhibit great leadership. I know you're going to go far, and I can't wait to see the successes that you both are going to become. I just know it. Um, when you do become the successes that you will be, be sure to come back and visit us. Come show off for us, and we'd love to have you come back and be a part of our community. So thank you for what you do, and um, congratulations again.
swear and affirm that I have not directly or indirectly paid, not directly or indirectly paid, offered, offered, promised to pay, promised to pay, contributed, contributed, or promised to contribute any money or thing of value, or promised to contribute any promised to contribute any money, any money or any thing money of value, of more value, or promised any public office, or promised any public office, or employment, or employment, for the giving or withholding, for the giving or withholding, of a vote at the election, of the vote of the election, at which I was elected, which I was elected, or as a reward, or as a reward, to secure my appointment, to secure my appointment, whichever the case may be, so help me God, for the case may be, so help me God. And you have been elected to the FISD Board of Trustees for Single Member District 2. And of the states of Holy God. 
of the meeting or the not so fun part. This is a good transition time if anybody would like to uh, exit. This is a good time for you to do it. You're welcome to stay. Everybody is. Um, but it's also a good time. Everybody can do it. Have a good night. <laughs> Christmas present idea, I'm just saying. Officer Mitchell. <laughs> Last Wednesday night, y'all broke constitutional rights. You broke your vow that I just watched Ms. Perlanga and Ms. Reed took to uphold the Constitution. This board has shown an inability to govern or find finances or any other part of this school. As Mr. Dickerson just stated, this board, together with the director, the administrator, administration, spent $186,000 for not the kids, not educational value, 
no educational supplements are in Skyward for the kids, but as it is quoted in my grievance by your staff, that Skyward is used to make the school staff more efficient, showing a lack of ability and comprehensive know-how to run a school efficiently. This is supposed to be y'all's job. This is supposed to be what you just signed and swore an oath to. But it appears that five left has not done that. So the only thing I can ask of a new board members is to bring forth a little trust and a little honesty with a little integrity to the full of the ISD school board and not let the taxpayers float the bill of employees that cannot do their job properly but expensive toys for the employees to make them look better. As well as make sure our students and their rights to have a fair and equal education, to have a just education, is actually fulfilled. Because at this time, there's a group of y'all that sat back in total agreement. All of y'all voted the same way to keep two disabled children out of school because you want to take away my parental right as an American not to join your website. Where is the freedom? Where is the pledge? We all witnessed you say it. We all witnessed an oath of office being taken by you. And now I have a documented record that all you just threw it out the window, didn't care, didn't show any capacity, to follow the law, follow the Constitution, to uphold a student's rights to get an education. Thank you. Review the status of implementation on a quarterly basis in September, December, March, and June. Last month, I provided part one of the September review, and tonight I will share the status of goal two, or part two, which is each student will be a lifelong learner prepared for their future. As a reminder, our district improvement plan includes the strategies from our strategic plan, and you will note on the slide that <coughs> any items related to the strategic plan are highlighted in yellow. Performance of Objective one for goal two is we will design innovative learning environments and by 2021 all campuses will create and utilize shared collaborative spaces. We have had some progress in all three strategies for this objective. Some of the progress has included identified spaces at both the high school and the middle school in, in the library areas and they're working on some others. And at the alternative school, they have repurposed a computer <coughs> and have made it into a restorative center. In that space, light covers have been replaced with cloud covers 
to create a more tranquil environment and being bad at chairs are being used, although there are chairs for those who don't want to be in the campaign. Performance Agenda 2 is also about innovative environments and that by 2022, all teachers will implement student-centered instructional models through innovative teaching and learning practices. We have had some progress in all three strategies for this objective. Some of the progress has included the uh, release of a balanced literacy handbook created by our teaching and learning team and shared with all K-5 teachers uh, and utilized during training so far. Blended learning is a type of student-centered instruction model that involves active engaged learning in which a student participates at least in part through online learning with some element of control over the pace, the path, or the place of their learning. The district has submitted a grant to Raise Your Hand Texas uh, for a blended learning and advanced to the second phase, and we submitted our second application just last week. And the Raising Blended Learning Learning Team attended a workshop in September specifically about that grant application. I will preempt a little bit the next time our report to say we also submitted a grant to the Texas Education Agency for planning of blended learning and were awarded $125,000 on Monday uh, to implement blended learning. So super excited about that as well. Performance Objective 3 is that by 2022, every student and teacher will have access to and utilize innovative technologies in all learning environments. We have had considerable progress in one strategy, some progress in two of the strategies, and no progress so far for one strategy. Some of the progress includes the identification of eight additional teachers in phase two of our Future Ready Grant Program, where those teachers have received a classroom set of Chromebooks and are receiving ongoing professional development provided by our digital learning specialist. Also, uh, representative staff from every campus attended an Empower Ed training in August where they received strategies that were included in an online format. And finally, the Innovative Technologies Tactic Team of our strategic plan have met to begin work on collecting the desired device information from each campus and they will be following that here next month. Performance Objective 4 is to increase the number of students who are grade level ready above the state average. We have accomplished one of these strategies and had considerable progress and some progress for the other two. Some of the progress includes all of our English language arts and Spanish language arts teachers in kindergarten through eighth grade receive writer's workshop training in September. Minutes of instruction for kindergarten through fifth grade were standardized and implemented at the beginning of the year for both elementary campuses. And a total of 57 staff attended a Professional Learning Community Institute in July, in addition to the 26 that attended the previous year. And all campuses were provided training in August on collective commitments, norms, and essential standards as part of our focus on professional learning communities. Lastly, Performance Objective 5 is to increase the number of students meeting college, career, and military readiness, and I'm sorry, another acronym, CCMR, in case. We have had some progress on three of the strategies and no progress for two. Some of the progress includes our career technical education <coughs> coordinator has begun to plan uh, the career fair to be held in March. All <coughs> of the students at the middle school are enrolled in investigating careers course. Our career technical education pathways are also being reviewed and updated for a list of certifications that was updated by the Texas Education Agency to 245 possible certifications that could account for accountability. There is a meeting with Palo Alto College to discuss potential dual credit uh, career technical education or CTE courses that have also been held. And we have added about 100 more students taking dual credit this year due to our expanded course offerings through Coastal Bend College. In December, I will provide an update on goals four and five, which will be part three of the formative review from September. This concludes the report, and I'll be happy to answer any questions. I didn't realize until I was listening to the podcast that Dr. Galloway and Mr. that we added a hundred more kids. That's really good. So, and, and some of them are freshmen getting ready, taking that entrance course, the learning mm -hmm. homework course, or whatever it is.
possible action for approval of the district 2018-19 financial audit. Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, and trustees, and Dr. Bass. Um, I'm pleased to be standing with, here with you tonight um, again for the second month in a row to present some positive information. If you recall last month, um, we were here for the 18-19 first reading, um, which showed great progress over the previous year. Um, tonight, I've asked Mr. Trevor Myers to, uh, with our audit firm of Coleman and <coughs> Company to present the fiscal audit for the 2019 uh, audit, uh, fiscal year. We are very pleased to present a clean audit and an increase in fund balance. With this evening's report, you will see that the district has reached the board's goal, which was set uh, for fund balance, which is uh, set in CE Local, uh, set in 2017 to be three months of operating expenditures. If you go back three years to fiscal year 2016, the district had a fund balance of $6.1 million. At the end of 2019, I'm happy to report we are at $9.3 million. Um, there are a couple of internal control issues, the issues that you will also hear this evening. But please know that we have put into place very specific um, action plans to address these shortcomings. Before I turn the podium over to Mr. Myers, I want to take the opportunity to thank my financial services staff that could be here with me this evening. We have Elaine Servin, who is our business office supervisor, Sandra Tackett, our business office administrative assistant, and formerly Alyssa here, who mm -hmm. Dr. Bay stole from us, as our child nutrition secretary. Um, unable, unable to be here, we have uh, Jamie Holcomb, our payroll supervisor, Melissa Pata, our accounts payable clerk, our <coughs> William Vasquez, our benefits and uh, substitute coordinator. These ladies have done a tremendous job in helping to achieve the audit results you will see tonight. Um, they've swayed with the winds during our change of leadership uh, during May and June when, we, when uh, Ms. Duke was leaving and before I came in the beginning of July. Um, they've na navigated some sometimes muddy and uncertain waters during an implementation software change, but um, they per persevered to make sure all of our employees and our bills were paid on time. Um, we do see a light at the end of the implementation, implementation uh, uh, tunnel, and we're pretty sure it's not a train, that we're coming out of it looking really good. So um, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Myers to present the audit. in advance. I had a, uh, a tragic tree farm uh, photo shoot incident over the weekend. So apparently I'm very allergic to pine. Did not know that? So, uh, <laughs> pictures turned out great. We get the color. So anyway, so, so, uh, you push that uh, a little bit? So I'll just give it. that every school district in the state get an audit performed by a certified public accounting firm in the state of Texas and that audit needs to be done within 150 days of the fiscal year so that ends up being November 27th um, if we're counting this year so by being here tonight and proving the audit we're going to achieve both of those objectives by TEA so in meeting that time requirement it obviously takes a huge collaboration with administration and staff and, and our firm as well so I want to thank Lindsay and her staff uh, for all the help that they gave us and everything, and they make our job uh, much easier or, or allow it to be done in a much more efficient manner. So we do appreciate that. So um, on pages four through six, this is our actual independent auditor's report. So briefly, it specifies that we audited the district financial statements for the year ended June 30th, 2019, and that the financial statements are ultimately the responsibility of the district and its administration, and our responsibility is to provide an opinion on those financial statements. So the audit was conducted in accordance with accounting standards and auditing standards generally accepted in the United States of America. And on the top of page five, you'll actually see our opinion, and it reads, in our opinion, the financial statements present fairly, in all material respects, the financial position of the governmental activities, each major fund, and the aggregate remaining fund information of the district as of June 30, 2019. This is known as an unmodified opinion, it's a clean opinion, and that is the highest opinion that an audit firm can so next we're going to go to page 14 and 15. Give me a second. I'll get there. So these are the statement of net position 